Emmanuel. It's probably, for me, the, the, the most important concept of, of what Christmas is all about and why we celebrate Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us. As we look at our, our troubled world, there is no time, I think, right now than, than what we experience now, than, than what we hope and, and, and hope that God is with us in the midst of all the turmoil and the tension that is going on. The, the issues of, of hunger continue to persist. Nations against nations and wars and threats of wars. Even in our own nation, the, the tension between now that is created by the, by the races. As we come and seek healing, healing from our God, and we hope that God is with us. We think sometimes that 9-11 was a watershed moment in which our world changed. But really, as we look back at the time when Isaiah went to, to speak to uh, the King Ahaz, it was also, there was international tension going on. King Ahaz was concerned about an invasion coming from the north, knowing full well that they would obliterate Israel and wipe them off of the map. map. And so he went and made a, an allegiance with what had been Assyrians, which had been longtime enemies of the Hebrew people. And then Isaiah stepped in. Isaiah came to give him this, this prophecy. He said, King Ahaz, do not make friends with your enemies. Do not trust them. You must learn to trust God. For there will be a child born to a young woman, and they will name him Emmanuel. God is with us. And so that was the assurance that King Ahaz received from Isaiah, that God is with them. And just as God is with them, God is with us today as we come to, to recall and, and remember the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Yet, too, we need to hear that, that message. Maybe not just for the world, but, but for our own selves, for our own hearts. John Wesley himself, the founder of our denomination, said this passage here was a great reminder that God is with us. And especially when he was going through very difficult and challenging times. I know that for many of us, there are many of us who are facing very difficult times in their lives, whether it's dealing with an illness or, or dealing with the loss of a loved one, the changes that occur when, when you get older and having to make decisions about your life, illnesses and broken relationships. In the midst of that, we are also longing to know that God is with us, giving us strength and encouragement. The pastor who shared a story about a, a little girl who, who lived just a few miles from her grandfather. And there was that special connection with this little girl and her grandfather that was like most relationships with grandchildren. That it was a connection that, that, that was tied from the very first time he, he held her in her arms. The little girl would come, and the grandpa had, had hourglasses, a collection of hourglasses that he scattered all over the house. There was hardly a room without an hourglass in it. And one of the traditions that, that she had experienced when she'd come and visit grandpa was that grandpa would let her go all through the house and turning over the hourglasses, and together they'd watch the sand begin to trickle, the grains of sand to trickle from one chamber to the next, and watching, in a sense, time go by. As she grew up, then she finally asked Grandpa, what is it about hourglasses that you, you have so many? And he goes to say that it reminds me about the gift of time, how precious that gift is. It's, it's something that we receive, but we can never get back. Each second that ticks away is one that we can never bring back to our lives. It reminds us of how, how precious that time is, like the time I spend with you even just turning over the hourglasses is such a gift to me. Well, days and weeks and months and years went by, and the visits continued as she would continue to turn over the hourglasses and visit Grandpa, but about Christmas time, years later, a little girl who had grown up to be a, a young woman said to Mom, 
How come we haven't gone to see Grandpa? How come we haven't gone to see Grandpa yet? And her mother said, well, I've got bad news for you. Grandpa's in the hospital. He's not doing very well. They think he's going to die. And this little girl who is now a young woman says, what do you mean by die? It's like the hourglasses that he had. The sand is trickling down and there's not much left. So how about if we go and see Grandpa? Maybe we can, we can cheer him up. And so why don't you put together a Christmas gift that you can take him and it might, might lift his spirits a little bit. And so the, the little girl now began to think that morning about what could he take to, she could take to Grandpa that would lift him up. So she thought and thought and finally she got her idea and she, she wrapped it up in a beautiful box with a bow and they went together to the hospital to see Grandpa. Right away, the little girl went to the grandpa and gave her this Christmas present. And slowly, he unwrapped it, and when he opened the box, he smiled. She filled the box with sand. She filled the box with sand, hoping that there would be more time that they would be able to spend together. I know that for all of us, there are moments in our lives that we think, oh, if only we had more time. Last night, as we were with Steve and, and Julie uh, Bernard and celebrating the wedding of Allison, and as Steve got to, to make the toast for, for the bride and the couple, he, he reminded me how quickly time flies as he was talking about bringing Allison home and holding her, for the, in her in his arms for the first time, and now here is she getting married. And I was thinking of our own daughter's wedding in, in the last 10 years, of how many are no longer in those pictures that we took when our daughter and son-in-law got married. How quickly time goes and how I wish we had more time and more moments, more precious moments to share with those loved ones. And that is why Christmas is so special because it reminds us that God sent his son Jesus to be in this world, not to be just a, a special child but one who would who would walk this earth and become a man, who would tell the stories of God's love, who was rejected by people and then hung on a cross to die. But God demonstrated that love was greater than death and rose him from the death. And before Jesus left his disciples, Jesus promised that I will be with you always. God is with us. God is very much with us. And that is what the gift of Christmas is all about, is that it is a reminder that not only do we receive this babe that is born in a manger, but it is a babe that comes to give us the gift of love and the gift of eternal life. So that those moments that we share with loved ones, that we long to be with them, we have the promise of heaven, that gift breath of heaven is born in Jesus is now ours because God is with us and that is the gift of Christmas let us pray gracious and heavenly God as we come before you we are reminded that you came as a babe grew to be a man yet was rejected by this world but God showed that love is greater than death so by the power of your love, remind us once again that you are with us always through the challenges and through the difficulties, through the joys and the celebration, that you are with us. Thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus. Amen.